Hello, everybody. So this video is going to be all about the perceptual qualities of sound and the physical qualities of the stimulus that we that our brains interpret as sound. So let's start our discussion by talking about the physical stimulus that our uh, perceptual system perceives as sound. So a, a number of our perceptual experiences don't don't exist outside of our head. So like, for example, color doesn't exist outside of our head. Um, well, sound is the same way. Sound doesn't exist outside of our head. Um, so our, what we perceive as sound is our perceptual system's interpretation of physical disturbances of pressure. So what we perceive as sound is sonic energy. All right, and so, for example, if you take the, the mask off of, uh, off of the speaker and look at the speaker, you'll note that when it's playing, all it's doing is moving in and out very quickly, in and out, in and out, in and out, in a specific pattern. Well, what it's doing is that when it pushes forward, it's compressing air in front of the speaker. When it's pulling back, it's stretching it out. And what, it do what that does is it creates this alternating pattern of condensation, and rarefaction, all right? Condensation are points where the molecules are shoved together and rarefaction is where it gets spread apart. Um, <clears throat> and this, this is essentially a pressure wave and it's the same, it works the same way every wave does, all right? Um, so like if you were to throw a rock in a pond, right? Um, that would displace the water and create pressure changes. Now, again, you don't see a hole go all the way down to the bottom as the, as, the, as the rock drops. The water collapses around it. But what's happened is that when the, when the rock hit, it pushed some water out, compressing it in a ring. And that compression, which is the equivalent of condensation, moves outward from that central point. Um, and, you know, as you get further and further away from where the rock hit the water, the waves get smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, that's the same, that's the reason why if I talk to you across a room, you can hear me, but if I talk to you, if I try to talk to you across a gymnasium, like a basketball gym, you probably wouldn't be able to hear me, right? Because the wave, the pressure wave deteriorates. Now, those physical qualities can be plotted. Right, we can plot them using sine wave, the same way we can plot uh, light waves, or really any wave. And every wave, when we plot it, we have a sine wave. And so this is a sine wave. And so when we're talking about a sine wave, each aspect of the sine wave represents certain perceptual, or certain physical qualities of the sound. For example, um, when we have points of condensation, greater density, in those points of condensation where there's greater density of the air molecules, all right, so, so I guess I, I don't think that I haven't mentioned that. When it's in the air, it's air molecules, all right? So air molecules, air out here, air, right, is being compressed and spread out, condensed and refracted, okay? So, how condensed it becomes and how spread out it becomes can change. It can be just barely condensed and just barely refracted, or it can be super condensed and super refracted. Well, the height of the crest plots how, uh, how much it's shoved together, how much the density has increased, and the trough represents how much the uh, air molecules are refracted during periods of refraction. So the waves and troughs plot the extent of pressure change, all right? How much it, uh, pressure increases and how much pressure drops. This middle line is your standard pressure, right? It's your it's atmospheric pressure, whatever the pressure is around, whatever the air pressure is around you. The other physical quality is the speed of those pressure oscillations. How quickly does it does the pressure jump and drop and then return to normal? How quickly, how many times does it do, do that in a given amount of time? Um, so 
uh, I'll explain this in a second. Um, but so if this were a second, right, then we would have one waveform, one cycle, a second. All right. Um, so your typical Hertz is, I think, a number of oscillations per second. So, uh, you know, 100 hertz sound is 100 complete waveforms, crests and troughs in a second. Okay. Now, this is not the same as how fast the pressure wave is traveling through the air, because all pressure waves travel through the air at the same speed. They all travel at 340 meters per second, or uh, 760 uh, 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 miles per hour. That's the speed of sound, is 760 miles per hour. Now, different mediums have different speeds. So for example, water, pressure waves move through water a lot faster, all right? They move through water at 1,493 meters per second, or 3,300 3, miles per hour. Um, this is why you can hear whale song for miles and miles away, all right? Um, because speed, travels really fast, or speed travels. I'm tired. Uh, sound travels really fast. But pressure waves, so these are, the, these are how quick sound moves through a medium. Medium is air, medium could be water. Medium is anything that a pressure, that a pressure wave can move through. Space is a vacuum, so there's no pressure. So a pressure wave can't move through space. Um, so this is, uh, the movie Aliens, it has the uh, tagline, no one can hear you scream in space, right? It's true, because in space, there's no medium. So there's nothing for, if you were to scream, right? There's no, there's no medium for your scream to go through. So a medium, pressure waves require a medium to move. And that medium can be air, it can be water, it can be walls, but it requires some mass, some medium, to move through it, all right? Um, so when I talk about the speed of pressure, pressure oscillations, I'm talking about the number of crests and, and troughs per second, okay? So when we plot these two qualities of sound, these physical qualities of sound, extent of change and speed of change, in, they represent the amplitude of the wave, so the, the height of the crests, the depth of the troughs, and the frequency, how quickly it oscillates within a, a given amount of time. So those are the physical qualities of sound. What are the perceptual qualities of sound? Well, loosely speaking, uh, frequency, which is typically measured in hertz, which is the number of, number of cycles per second, all right, that's perceived as pitch loosely all right so as pitch goes up sorry as hertz goes up perceived pitch goes up amplitude is the extent of pressure change and so um if we were to represent i think your book i think the goldstein book is a pretty good example of this if we were to represent a whisper the change in pressure due to a whisper as a quarter inch amplitude, quarter inch bump up above the line and quarter inch below. By that metric, it would we would have to draw a wave a mile high to plot the amplitude of a loud sound like a like a concert stereo or or a jet engine. All right, so. Um, because it's unmanageable to, to plot a sine wave like that, we can convert those into a more manageable form like decibels, all right? In case you care, you, you notice that this abbreviating custom is a little off, odd with you. Usually the first letter is the big, the big letter or the capital letter. With decibels, it's the opposite. It's because B, decibels, <coughs> it's because bells is, it, it's named after Alexander Bell. Um, and bell became a unit of measurement, um, the, the perceived change in volume. Uh, a decibel is a tenth of that, roughly, all right? 
Well, we can convert changes in air pressure to decibels, all right? So we measure, if we measure in micropascals, right? Then if we take the quotient, so if we divide the pressure change, so let's take a sound, all right? Like that, oh, that, sorry, sorry, sorry. If we take that though, right? That sound, that clapping sound, changed the pressure moving in all directions out from the clap, all right? It created a change in air pressure. That, that pressure wave moved through space, all right? It moved through and hit the speaker, and when the speak, your home speakers play it out, it's going, to, uh, it's going to replicate that loud sound. And so the sound coming from your speaker is going to have a similar pressure to what I just created when I clapped. Well, that would be our uh, sound being considered. And so we would identify the pressure in micropascals caused by that clap. We would divide that by a reference pressure, usually 20 pas micropascals. We divide those two numbers. So let's say it was 20,000, right? So we would divide 20,000 by 20. Whatever that quotient is, we would take the natural log of that. So we would need a scientific calculator. Whatever that number is, is then multiplied by 20, okay? Now, the bigger the pressure we're considering gets, the bigger the decibel. And so, as sounds get louder, decibel goes up. So many stereos measure volume in decibels. When you turn up the volume, you turn up the decibels. And to just give you an idea, here are some of the, some common sounds that we hear. Here are their amplitudes and their decibels, all right? And I don't know, this, this is, the, this number is from an old version of the textbook, so I don't think that's right. But I, I think this chart is somewhere in the Goldstein book. Um, so be sure to check that out. So that gives you a general idea of uh, the perceptual, the physical qualities of sound, right? So you got extent of changes in pressure, speed of changes in pressure, and then you've got the perceptual qualities that those physical qualities are tied to. So the greater, sorry, <laughs> the greater the change in the extent of air pressure, higher the amplitude of the sine wave and the louder we perceive it to be. So amplitude is a physical quality loosely associated with the perceptual quality of loudness. So perceptual quality, the qualities we perceive. Physical quality, the qualities of the physical stimulus that we're perceiving, all right? So extent of uh, changes in air pressure, uh, we perceive as loudness. And then the speed of those changes, we perceive uh, as pitch. We measure it with frequency and we perceive it. Perceptual quality associated with the speed of change, the speed of pressure changes, uh, the perceptual quality is pitch. Physical quality, speed of pressure change, perceptual quality, pitch. And that is it for our discussion of perceptual and physical qualities of sound. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send them away. But if not, we'll see you next time.